I hate mimes. Like a lot. A lot of people say clowns are the creepy ones, but honestly, I felt like mimes are way creepier. While clowns are colorful and funny, mimes aren't. They are just silently watching, miming, plotting. But that's not the reason why I hate mimes. I lived in the city, in an apartment building, and worked a minimum wage job. I couldn't really work anywhere else, since I had been fired everywhere else. Everything sucked. All the people around me were always such idiots, saying that I'm an asshole to everyone I meet. I'm not an asshole, do I sound like an asshole? Well, I guess you can't hear what I sound like, but you get the point. Anyways, I was walking down the street tonight, still pissed that I had gotten fired. All I did was cuss a customer out for taking too long to order. God damn. As I walked, I thought to myself, today couldn't get any fucking worse. It did. It started when I encountered a large crowd forming on the sidewalk. They were surrounding a mime street performer who was doing the usual invisible box routine. After he finished, he bowed, taking off his beret and holding it out to collect spare change. I groaned as I saw all the idiots giving this bum their money, before I continued walking down the street, shoving through some of the crowd members. I suddenly felt something softly tap me on my shoulder. I turned around, and there was the mime, holding his beret out to me. I looked down into it, and for some fucking reason, it was filled with only dimes. There was also a tag on the inside that read, Dimes Only. Did this dumbass seriously expect me to give him my money? That I worked so hard for? I didn't think so. And why the hell would you only ask for dimes? I shoved the hat away and turned back around, continuing to walk down the street. That was when I heard a few people begin to laugh. Then it became more. Soon it sounded like a whole crowd was chuckling. I whipped my head around, only to see that the mime was behind me, stomping his feet, looking all angry. He was mocking me, and these people found it funny. How dare they? I flipped off the mime, and I could hear a few people gasp, only for them to laugh even harder when the mime flipped me off back. This fucking bitch. It took up all of my willpower to prevent myself from tackling this mime motherfucker to the ground. I took a deep breath and walked away. For the rest of the walk, I ignored everything around me until I got back to my apartment building and to my room. I threw myself onto the bed, just wanting to go to sleep. But I couldn't. I was already pissed about losing my job, and the mime made it a hundred times worse. Anger boiled over me. I needed someone to blame, someone to unleash my wrath upon. That's when I looked up and saw myself in the full-body mirror that was across from me. I got up and walked over to the mirror, to the scumbag that made every day terrible. I scowled as I looked at my reflection, with that dumb, idiot, smug grin. Wait a minute, I thought to myself. I'm not grinning. The man in the mirror must have realized that I had noticed, because he resumed being my reflection. I stared deep into those soulless eyes wondering if I really saw something. Suddenly, my reflection sprouted an insanely large, toothy smile, right before swinging its leg at the speed of light and kicking me right in the balls. I shouted in surprise and collapsed to the floor, writhing in pain. As I struggled to lift my head, I could see the mirror man step through the empty mirror frame into my room. Who, who, who the hell are you? I grunted, still in pain. The mirror man shined another devious smile before reaching his hand behind his head, grabbing something I couldn't see. Slowly but surely, his arm lowered, going down his back, in a way that would be impossible for a normal human to do. Along with that came an unzipping sound. The flesh suit dropped to the ground and the imposter took two steps out of it so he was standing right over me. I slowly craned my head upwards and saw a pale, ghostly face looking down at me smiling. It was the goddamn mime. You! I exclaimed as I jumped up to my feet. I completely forgot about the excruciating pain that I was in, as I was now fueled by anger. My rage was interrupted by the faint thumping sound of a broom handle hitting the ceiling of the apartment under mine. The mime flashed a smile once again and nodded creepily. Why? I shouted. The thumping of the broom came again, only louder. 
The mime responded only by taking off his beret, pushing it towards me, and pointing to it. So, let me get this straight, I growled, as I closed my eyes and began to rub my head, trying to keep my cool. You followed me home, went into my mirror, kicked me in the balls, all because I didn't give you a goddamn dime? The sound of the thumping broom was the loudest it's ever been. If you hit the ceiling again, I swear to God I will come down there and murder you! I roared, using all of the air in my diaphragm. The thumping stopped. Didn't they know people can hear that thumping? How inconsiderate can you be? I turned to look at the mime. He was holding out his beret towards me with both hands expectantly. Now maybe I could have just given him one dime. It wouldn't have hurt me financially that much. Maybe this could have all been over. But I was furious. I was mad. I didn't care if he had some kind of supernatural powers he had to pay. I forced a fake smile. Sure, yeah, I exclaimed, my right eye twitching slightly. I'll pay you! I swiped the beret out of the mime's hand, and he began to clap with glee, expecting me to drop a dime in. What he didn't expect was me slapping the beret into his face, before punching him through it as hard as I could. He stumbled backwards, tripping over the mirror frame that he came through, and landing on his butt in my room's reflection. I started to laugh. Finally, a mime that I found funny. After a few seconds, the mime slowly stood back up, brushed himself off, and removed the beret from his face to put it back on his head. That's when I noticed that the mime no longer had a smile on his face. In fact, he no longer had a face. There were just two bottomless pits where his eyes were, but I could still tell that he was somehow staring at me, this time with malicious intent. He then started to claw at where his mouth used to be, and I watched in horror as he created a new mouth by tearing off his skin, revealing several rows of disgustingly long, sharp teeth underneath. The rest of his body started to morph in disgusting ways that you couldn't even imagine, and a screeching sound filled the air. Hell no, fuck that. I instantly ran to my door, swung it open, and flew out into the hallway. On the other side of the hall, I could see the elevator. I sprinted for my life, towards it. I could hear whatever the fuck that thing was barreling down the hall after me, its ungodly screaming becoming louder and louder. Just as I was a few feet away from the elevator, its doors opened, and I saw a man, who was over six feet tall, jacked, and had a scowl on his face. He was also holding a broom. Shit. Broom guy saw me as well and took a step out of the elevator towards me. So you're the guy screaming about killing me? Well, guess what? I have this broom, and guess where its handle is going? Up your, uh, ah, what the fuck is that? I shoved past him, catching him by surprise and causing him to fall to the floor, before running into the elevator, pushing the button to go to the bottom floor as fast as I could. I glanced down the hall and saw the mime, which didn't even look remotely human anymore, on all fours. I also saw the guy with the broom, glaring at me. Fuck you, man, said broom guy, right before the elevator doors closed, sparing me from watching the mime tear his insides out. The wait for the elevator doors to reopen felt like it took forever. I was worried that the mime was going to burst through the ceiling and kill me. Fortunately, the elevator doors did open before that could happen. Unfortunately, it was not on the first floor of my apartment building. With a ding, the elevator doors slowly opened, and I stepped out, utterly confused. I was back inside my apartment room. I turned around to go back into the elevator, but it was gone. I felt something softly tap my shoulder. I whipped around to see the mime. God damn it! The mime had his arm stretched out to me, holding his beret as if he didn't just try to kill me five minutes before. I had enough of this. All of this. I shoved the mime back, away from me. For the last time, you aren't getting any of my dimes. Besides, who the hell just carries dimes around? I don't even know if I have any. That's when I saw the mime flapping his mouth up and down, mocking me. I would never allow someone to disrespect me like that. Especially not a mime. That's it. I've had enough. I challenge you to a fight, to the death. Well, you're probably immortal, but let's throw hands anyway. The mime shrugged as if to say, okay, bro, and rolled up his black and white sleeves, 
revealing equally as pale arms as his face. He got into a stance and raised his fists. He looked serious. I took a deep breath. It's now or never, Gary, I thought to myself, right before I ran towards the mime, ready for the fight of my life. I collided with an invisible wall. Of course, the mime could summon a magic invisible wall, like in his street axe. Why fucking not? The mime clutched his chest, with his mouth wide open, feigning laughter. No fair! I yelled, still disoriented from running into a fucking wall. I began to press my hands around, trying to find an entrance. No matter what I did, it had no effect on the mime. It was hopeless. Unless... That was when I had an idea. It was either this or death. This was my last resort. My last stand. You're a terrible mime. The mime's look of happiness dropped and became one of confusion. No way was I going to give this mime my hard-earned, maybe non-existent dimes. So I decided to do the thing I did best. Insults. Like, half the time you don't even mime, you just kick people in the balls and do demonic shit. The mime stared at me. What the hell even are you, bro? Some weird demon mime thing? Who thought of this? Is this just the universe's way of creating a joke? The mime's face was blank, devoid of all emotion. Though I shouldn't really call you a joke since you're not even funny. The mime took a step closer. You're just a sad, pathetic attempt at a joke that someone would tell their friends at a bar, and no one would even laugh. He took another step. I could hear him deeply breathing now. I bet you don't even have any friends, do you? You don't even talk. I bet outside of this whole mime persona, you're nothing. Literally. You're literally just a mime. There's no real person underneath all that makeup. Without this whole mime getup, you would be... Nothing. His face was now inches away from mine. I closed my eyes and prepared for the worst. But then I heard it. Sniff, I opened my eyes, and I could see that the sound came from the mime. He was crying. Sniff. Jeez, man, you didn't have to be so mean. I'll just leave, whimpered the mime, face full of tears. He backed up from me and began to pack a suitcase that wasn't there before, on the bed. You can talk, I exclaimed, confused as all hell. Yeah, sniveled the mime. We demon mime things have a life too, you know. And feelings. He finished packing and headed towards the mirror across from my bed. Where are you going? I asked. Somewhere where my talent will be appreciated, he said, as he sniffed up one last tear. I'm Pantomimicus, the goddamn god of mimes. I deserve some goddamn respect. Who? The mime stopped crying and now looked livid. Of course you don't know who I am. I bet you don't even know my dime rhyme. You see his act. You must tip a dime, or else he'll come for you. Pantomimicus the mime. I didn't respond. You know, all I ask for is one dime. One goddamn dime. But no, you can't even give me one. You're either one greedy son of a bitch or you're broke as hell. Actually, you're probably both. God damn it, it was one fucking dime. I need my dimes, Gary. W why dimes? I stuttered, taking a step back. I didn't even think to ask how he knew my name. Why the hell not, Gary? I have habits and hobbies just like anyone else. Do you have any habits or hobbies besides being a narcissistic asshole? I'm a goddamn magical mime. I can do whatever the hell I want, and you can't do shit. You know what? Fuck this shit, man. I come out once in a century, and this is the stuff I have to fucking deal with. I'm out of here. Good day to you, you goddamn motherfucking son-of-a-bitch-ass piece-of-shit mortal prick. It's night, I corrected. Fuck off. The mime then stepped through the mirror disappearing to whatever mime dimension there was on the other side. I checked the mirror to see if he was really gone. Sure enough, my reflection was back to normal. I walked over to my bed and sat down, wondering what the hell just happened, in the span of about an hour. Well, at least he's gone. Now I'm no longer in any danger, I thought to myself. That was when the unmistakable noise of a broom handle thumping against my apartment door snapped me out of my train of thought. Hey, bitch! You left me for dead! shouted Broom Guy from the other side. I don't know what the fuck that demon mime thing was, but I do know one thing. Somebody's fucking dying tonight. In case it wasn't that clear, I'm going to kill you. With this broom! And that's it. 
that's how I die. It's also why I hate mimes. I survived Pantomimicus the Mime God, only to die by a guy with a broom. Wow. I figure that since I'm dying anyway, I might as well type down everything that lead up to this moment. Breaking down a door with a broom isn't a fast task, so I had plenty of time to write everything down, with some extra time left over. I think I'll make a few closing statements. Today has been extremely weird. I've been chased around by a supernatural mime, defeated him by insulting him, and I'm about to be killed by a guy with a broom. But maybe there's a lesson to be learned here. Maybe, just maybe, I shouldn't have been an asshole to everyone that I have met, which could have prevented a demon mime god from tormenting me because I didn't give him a dime. I'm gonna go check if I actually did have a dime this whole time. Turns out I never had a dime in my pocket, or my apartment. You know what? There's no lesson to be learnt here. My life just fucking turned to shit over a series of random and bizarre events that made literally zero sense. I couldn't do anything about it. You can never truly know in life whenever you'll run into a magical mime with a desire for dimes, or a man with a broom and a thirst for vengeance. Well, maybe there can be one thing learnt here. I guess my life really turned on a dime, huh? I'll see myself out.